Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hi again everyone Welcome to the continuation of the lectures for the course Professional Ethics, Safety and Health So today we will talk on the engineer's responsibility for safety, environment and health I will talk or introduce the topic today and then in the following week we will discuss and there will be a mini project for all of you Okay, getting back to the previous lecture, uh, I've mentioned the commitment, the competence for a chartered engineer. So, if you recall, there are five uh, competency that must be uh, demonstrated by a chartered engineer. The fifth one is stated here, okay, where the chartered engineer must be committed to professional standards, obligation to society and profession and the environment, and this has been this detail out in the UK spec as follows. So you will see here the engineer has to manage and apply safe systems of work. So you can see here health, safety and welfare are stated in two or three points here. And also the engineer has to develop and implement appropriate hazard identification and risk management systems. So these are very important. So today we will cover this little bit of this topic. Before we move on, uh, we must know that the department responsible for safety is this department which is the Jabatan Keselamatan dan Kesihatan Pekerjaan, the Department of Occupational Safety and Health. So this department is under the Ministry of Human Resources and is responsible for ensuring the safety, health and welfare of people at work as well as protecting other people from the safety and health hazards arising from the activity sectors and the activity sectors are like shown in the pictures you know almost all sectors are, are involved uh, this includes manufacturing mining construction agriculture sanitary and many others so as the government agency the department is responsible for the administration and enforcement of legislations related to occupational safety and health of the country with a vision of becoming an organization which leads the nation in creating a safe and healthy work culture that contributes towards enhancing the quality of working life. So, these are the uh, safety legislations in Malaysia. It consists of acts, regulations, orders, code of practices, guidelines. So, the acts, regulations, orders, guidelines are listed down in the DOSH website, so you can refer to this later on, okay, for the details, but just remember that the act that is relevant is Act 514 uh, for the Occupational Safety and Health, okay. The act is the broad uh, legal principles, whereas the rest, the regulation or the code of practice and, and guidelines are the uh, more focused and are designed to set out the application of that particular act. So if you want to refer to this chart, you can see that's the hierarchy of the legislation. So you have the Act and then all the regulations and order. And after order, you would have the guidelines and the um, code of practice. Okay. The scope of this uh, Act 514 cover all economic activities and government except armed forces and seafarers. And the approach is as stated here, it involves employer, employee and government and it also involves worker cooperation and participation. So the main objective is here to safeguard health and welfare of employees and those at the place of work, example, visitors, contractors, etc. Safety is defined as the state of being safe and protected from danger or harm. That's the Oxford Dictionary definition. If you look at this slide, you can see four different pictures. These are actual pictures taken from four different labs in a particular university. But just to let you know that there are actually uh, accidents. Okay? There are some accidents that has happened before in two out of four of these labs. So you might want to pause the video for a while to guess which two of the four labs that uh, accidents did occur. 
um, the other two labs there are it's it's you can see some potential accidents uh, or hazard happening but let me just show you I, I will explain one but the other three I will explain during the online class where actually the uh, accident that has happened before so I will just explain uh, this picture okay here the accident never happened there's no any incident that has happened but this is a potential hazard you can't see it clearly before but you can see that the gas tank is not securely fastened by law it has to be securely fastened by this chain to the uh, wall okay so not to a table so this is a potential hazard situation which you need to be able to look up later on in your profession okay an example of accidents that has actually happened um, it was this was back in 2016 okay March 16 where an explosion occurred and a lab worker lost her arm and because of a spark that uh, ignited a gas tank okay so you can see the losses infrastructure infrastructure damages and losses uh, that has happened because of uh, accident at the lab so this is the kind of things that we want to avoid in our profession so what are the con possible contributing factors they have listed down these six factors okay which uh, related to weak laboratory safety no enforcement lack of policy and so on poor standard operating procedures and so on so you want to avoid this kind of things before uh, before accidents happen if you are interested you may want to visit this uh, very nice website this uh, website by the laboratory safety institute this is actually a non-profit educational institution providing safety courses and consulting for chemical laboratories worldwide now what's interesting is this website they have one one place where they call it memorial wall okay that's that's where they document all those who have uh, died due to some accidents in, in in particular labs so you can browse through up to like now it's 2020 you can the list goes on all the way back to 19 50s 1940s and you can see all the different accidents that has actually happened and caused lives so this is a very uh, <laughs> useful I think if you want to look at what kind of accidents that have actually happened in labs for the past years how can you avoid or minimize accidents there are six uh, points that have been suggested by this uh, company this is an independence incorporated uh, uh, private company but there are six points that uh, have been highlighted which I think uh, is relevant for not just engineering profession for all professions so number one always be alert of, co of course uh, being awake and alert isn't just important in order to complete tasks but it also helps to keep uh, us out of harm's way according to there is a person Julian Hall most of the people who become involved with accidents at work are those who feel sleepy while working so always be alert number two don't rush your work in many workplaces time is of the essence employees are given deadlines so of course we must meet them but it is important to take the appropriate amount of time to perform your duties safely okay that's number two number three wear required safety gear okay many jobs require uniforms but the jobs that require the wearing of safety equipment are the ones where dress codes are the most important a person who works in a factory has a greater chance of being involved in an accident work. Thus, he should be more vigilant about the wearing of proper uniforms and other protective garments when working. 
Never take safety to chance. So always go to work with the proper dress code. So this is PPE, personal protective equipment. This is a very important thing. Okay, number four, follow instructions to a T. So sometimes uh, we get complacent because we have done certain things so many times. But it's easy to fall into the trap of assuming that you are an expert at your job. So you don't need to uh, follow the instructions anymore. So paying attention to detail can help you to avoid making mistakes that can lead to injury. So don't take shortcuts. Number five, pay attention to and follow emergency drills. So as you can see in the very first slide, I show the fire drill. So all, all the occupants of MJIT building during that time have to participate. So workers tend to take safety drills for granted. If they are not the real thing, they often go through motions carelessly. However, participation in such drills couldn't be more important. So make sure if uh, there are safety drills, so make sure you take part uh, with all the rest of your co-workers. And finally, insist upon proper training. So this is very important. If you plan on taking on a job that may present a number of risks. So knowing exactly what you are in for and how to react during emergency situations is imperative for your safety. So it is stupid for anyone to take on a high risk job, especially if he has not been trained for the job. So make sure you know what you're doing. Make sure you know whether a proper training is required. So this is uh, one way, okay, a few steps that can be used as guidelines to avoid accidents wherever you are actually. A more systematic way to minimize or avoid accidents is called the hierarchy. Okay, this is an uh, abbreviation for hazard identification, risk assessment, and risk control. And there is a guideline provided by the DOSH in in their website, so you can download. A very detailed document on this. We're going to talk a little bit about this. So, what is it actually? HRAC is the overall process of estimating the magnitude of risk and deciding whether the risk is tolerable. Risk assessment results is documented. So, when you have identified the risk, you document it, and that document will be used for risk control in OSH management and future reference and review. So this is very important for other people who are working in the same environment. The process should be continuous and should not be regarded as a one-off exercise. So that's HIREC. So what does HIREC, the, the advantage uh, of HIREC includes, it gives organizations a more effective and systematic way of managing hazards. Okay, number two requirement of law so, for example, in the Act OSHA 994, in some of the um, regulations, CIMA and UCHH, it is a requirement of that particular regulations. And in other management system standards, for example, the ILO, OSHMS, and UK Health and Safety Executive Guideline, and the ISO 45001, it is a requirement to conduct HIREC in in this, this are just a few examples of the management system standards that has made it uh, obligatory to to conduct hierarchy for organizations. Okay, the purpose of hierarchy is to identify all the factors that may cause harm to employees and others. Number two, to consider what the chances are of that harm actually befalling anyone in the circumstances of a particular case and the possible severity that could come from it. And number three, to enable employers to plan, introduce and monitor preventive measures to ensure that the risks are adequately controlled at all times. So before we move on, let's look at some definitions uh, related to this hierarchy. So remember, hierarchy means hazard identification. So what's, what, what is meant by hazard? Number one, so hazard is anything that can cause harm. Danger is the exposure to harm. And also risk, so we have hazard identification, risk assessment. So risk is the likelihood, i.e. the chance, the probability of harm being done. 
Number four, severity. So severity is the outcome from an event such as severity of injury or health of people or damage to property or polluting the environment or any combination of those caused by the event. Risk can be estimated by calculation. Okay, so this is an estimation of risk. It give a, the equation is given here. Risk is equal to the severity times the likelihood of hazard. In some cases, they call it the probability of the probability of uh, exposure of that particular hazard. So the remaining causes of hazards: machinery, materials, man, medium, surrounding. So when we want to identify the hazard, there are three activities that we can do. Number one is inspection and observation at the workplace and review of documents and publications. Number two, measurement of the atmosphere, monitoring the environment or medical surveillance of workers. Number three, interviewing the workers. So we talk to the workers, we conduct analysis and we brainstorm with uh, the people involved. So this way, these are three uh, guidelines on how to identify the hazards. So what are the different types of hazards? It could be the hazards can be physical, electrical, biological, chemical, social, physical, and you can look at the more detail of different classi classification of hazards in the appendix B of the doc HIREC document. So how do we calculate the risk? So we're now talking about risk assessment. So risk assessment, as shown here, it's uh, severity times the likelihood or probability of exposure to the particular hazard. So we can uh, rank okay, the, the hazard, the severity of the hazard from the lowest one, negligible, this includes minor abrasion, bruises, cuts, first hit type injury, and then minor, serious, fatal, and catastrophic. And the highest one is catastrophic, which includes numerous fatalities, so means death, irrecoverable property damage and productivity so that's the highest severity and also the likelihood can be ranked to okay, from inconceivable it means it's practically impossible to happen to the most likely to happen okay so we give the rating from one to five and we can um, form uh, we can form this risk matrix of the likelihood of happening of that particular hazard and the severity of it and what we can do is we multiply likelihood and severity and the num the resulting number the bigger the number means the worse the the more risk uh, the hazard is okay it's hard means it's a, a much riskier hazard okay so in practice we can color code it so green means uh, low hazard and the red one is high risk hazard okay. yellow in between so if we look at this table if the hazard is categorized as high risk then you have to do these are the action okay. high risk requires immediate action to control the hazard as detailed in the hierarchy of control actions taken must be documented on the risk assessment it's medium then you have to conduct plan approach but again it should be documented if it's low and you may not do anything but still it needs to be recorded so re recording and documenting the uh, risk is very important and documentation can be done using this form as suggested by the DOSH okay you can see in appendix D from the document this is how we document a particular hazard. So these are the details of the company, the location, and so on, who are the people involved. And then the hazard identifica identification, so the kind of activity, loading the machine with wood, this is just an example. You know, hazard cutting blades, so what would be the effect cuts first eight type injury. So the risk analysis as we shown before, the probability of happening, okay, the likelihood, and the severity. So you have cuts, cutting blades, so severity is one, but 
it's highly likely to happen so if you multiply it 4 times 1 is 4 so it's, the risk is low and then uh, the other types of hazard are listed down here so you can see there is 12, 12, 3 and this is the highest uh, highest form of risk which is repair and maintenance of the machine so serious cuts from blade and getting caught in rotating parts if machine is accidentally started so this is high priority so we have to do some action on it so finally the risk control is the action that needs to be done uh, most mostly on the highest risk okay so here we have a item number four which has the highest risk so we have to repair the delay start button and who are the person in charge of it okay so when to conduct high rank so but I, as mentioned before high rank should be done continuously okay so especially as listed down here when establishing new organization new work and on an ongoing basis when there are organizational changes review whenever there are changes so there could be internal and external changes so you could have modified something or introduced new materials machines or process and it could be amendment of some laws and maybe new technology has come in so this hierarchy should be done continuously uh, by the person the people who are working on the equipment on the in the particular environment or by the management who should conduct audit every now and then who can perform high so these are the person or persons trained to identify hazard and risk assessment okay consultation with an involvement of workers involvement of supervisors so basically number two means everyone who are involved right so you would have a, a trained person to help in uh, identifying the hazard but there's also the person involved so if the lab the main uh, user of the lab are students so students should be involved too with identifying the hazard and students can identify a particular hazard and should report the particular hazard to the superior maybe to the lecturer or to the head of lab or to the technician okay so we have done the uh, identification and risk assessment and next topic will be the risk control this has been hasn't been discussed yet which I, I plan to discuss later on in the online class these are the main resources but before before we end this video I just would like to point out that there's a tool that we can use just to to give you a feeling of how actually has it identification is being done so if you go to if you go to this website this is the website uh, in the United States Department of Labor so they have provided this uh, training tool which you can download so there's a Windows version and the Mac version and you can see how uh, the hazard identification and even risk assessment is being used okay so let's just have a look quickly okay so here you can see the simulation okay, where you have different scenarios so I'm just going to show you one example of how to uh, conduct hazard identification so you can see this is a situation where a person is uh, trying to use an equipment okay so basically you can see a list of hazard okay over here list of hazard as a person and the uh, equipment and you are given choice to inspect the equipment observe the operation and involve the worker okay this is by the way pre-recorded because it doesn't run on my Mac okay but it does run on my Windows computer so I've recorded the game which I actually played so the first thing that you can do is inspect the equipment so can you see anything wrong 
so I've highlighted the 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 um, there's some exposed electrical wire. So if you if you think that's relevant, then you should tick uh, the hazard. Okay, that is relevant to this particular situation. So I've ticked it just now. So let's try to find some more. So you can see the operation of the saw. This is an electric saw. So you can see how the saw is very close to his hand, his finger. So you can just uh, yeah, tick that particular one. And then you can, the tool can simulate interview to the worker. So you can see it's not hearing very well. He got hit with the saw, you know, a couple of times. So you can take all that's relevant. So he's tripping on the cord. Okay, electrical cord again. So you can find if it's relevant. So every time you play the game, the situation changes. Okay, the game intelligently choose a different situation, although the equipment is still the same. So you can test your knowledge, your um, bit some experience. So you can see that I have missed one. So upper blade guard. So you should I should have ticked that particular one. Okay, that's one example of the hazard identification. So in the next example, I want to show you how the risk assessment is being uh, used. So let's look at the same game again. But in this case, you, uh, you, you will see how the risk assessment tool is actually being used. Okay, this is the imaginary situation where you are the head of the a particular company you want to make as much profit as possible so the idea is if accidents happen then you lose money okay. if it doesn't happen then you make profit so you can go and inspect the equipment the work area okay. so for example here you can see here that uh, the severity and exposure Severity 5 means the highest, very much as what, what I have explained in the slides. And they call it exposure, which is the likelihood, likelihood parameter. So exposure is the probability of exposure, probability of happening. That particular hazard is happening. So you can multiply exposure and the uh, hazard to get the, the severity and the exposure to get the uh, risk level. So the idea of the game is just you find as much uh, possible hazard as much as possible okay, by talking to the person and eventually you will log all the hazards found and if you can find or resolve the most uh, so you, this, this is the risk control but you will lose money if you apply the control okay so you just eliminate all the uh, the big uh, the, the big the risk that has the highest value. So five times three is fifteen. So above fifteen, if you can eliminate eliminate all of them, normally you will avoid uh, accidents from happening. So if you end, you have to balance. So let me just pause. So basically, you have to balance. Uh, the actions that you take and the uh, fixing the hazard so if you you don't need to actually fix all the hazards you know just fix the, the higher value ones the the riskier ones and then eventually as you play along the workers will help you by finding by reporting hazards so these are all recorded and as you play along you if you continuously remove the high probability hazards the high severity of hazards 
then eventually you will see you are making a lot of profits okay so this is a nice nice uh, simulate simulation game okay so now you have an idea of uh, hazard you have an idea of safety and how we can what are the steps to uh, to how we can avoid accidents and then there's a systematic way of uh, avoiding accident by finding or identifying the hazards that that hasn't occurred yet okay and then you assess them calling the risk assessment and then you will take necessary steps to avoid them to eliminate them if possible completely that's called risk control that will be discussed later in class okay these are my resources so thank you everyone for your attention i hope you have enjoyed the uh, video we will talk more on this in the online class on, on monday next week okay thanks see you